What if I told you that, in the aftermath of World War II, the Soviet Union built a tank so advanced that nothing in the world could match it at the time? A 68-ton fortress on tracks, armed with a naval-derived 130mm gun and protected by armor that could shrug off the heaviest shells of the era. Faster than many medium tanks and deadlier than any heavy in service, it seemed unstoppable, but only a handful were ever built. Its fate sealed by politics, doctrine, and competition from other secret Soviet designs. Today, we'll uncover how this Cold War giant came to be, the rivals it outclassed, the trials that proved it nearly invincible, and the real reason it never left the proving grounds. The IS-7 didn't simply roll out of a design bureau. It was forged from years of battlefield lessons and engineering gambles. By 1943, the Red Army was staring down Panthers, Tiger IIs, and Jag Tigers, machines that forced Soviet planners to rethink what a breakthrough tank needed to be. The immediate response was twofold. Push the proven IS-2 harder and develop successors that became the IS-3 Object 703, and IS-4, Object 701. At the same time, a wave of experimental heavies tested how far the formula could be pushed. This is where the IS-7's Frankenstein DNA begins to take shape. Under the IS-6 umbrella came Object 252, 252U, and 253. The 252 introduced sharply sloped armor to boost protection without a huge weight penalty. The 252U debuted the pike nose geometry that would define future Soviet heavies, and the 253 trialed an electromechanical transmission, yielding valuable lessons through its failures. None became production tanks, but each contributed a piece of the puzzle, armor shaping, drivetrain experimentation, and internal layout that the IS-7 would later combine. By mid-1945, plant number 100 in Leningrad raised the bar with objects 257, 258, and 259. The 257 is often cited as the first true IS-7 ancestor. New armor geometries, refined suspension options, and the idea of assisted loading to keep rate of fire competitive with large caliber guns. Then the bar jumped again. Weight increased to around 60 tons, and immunity against the German 12.8 centimeters became mandatory. This was more than a spec change. It was an open challenge to build a tank immune to the heaviest German weapons while delivering more firepower than anything in Red Army service. From this competitive design round, which explored both 122mm BL-13-1 and 130mm S-26 guns, along with different drivetrains, Object 260 emerged as the frontrunner. Between late 1946 and 1948, Object 260 matured into the IS-7 we recognize. The provisional S-26 was replaced by the definitive 130mm S-70, a naval-derived long-barrel gun paired with an assisted loading system for two loaders. Beneath the armor sat a 1,050-horsepower M-50T diesel mated to a planetary gearbox, giving the approximately 68-ton machine a level of agility few believed possible. Trials confirmed it could reach approximately 60 kilometers per hour on road, steer responsively, and most famously, shrug off frontal fire that would wreck lesser tanks. Its armor wasn't just thick, it was sculpted to make physics do the work. A refined pike bow, trap-free turret cheeks, and a colossal mantlet. While Leningrad drove Object 260 forward, Chelyabinsk's SKB-2 proposed its own solutions. The Object 705 aimed for approximately 65 tons with a rear-mounted turret, placing the engine between the crew and incoming fire, lowering the frontal profile, but limiting gun options to something like the 122mm BL-13. Its larger sibling, the Object 718, often called 705A, pushed the idea into approximately 100-ton territory with a 152mm gun and extravagant armor angles. On paper, both offered heavy protection. In practice, the 705 never left the drawing board, and the 718's weight demanded power plants Soviet industry couldn't yet deliver. Strategic timing was worse still. On February 18, 1949, the Council of Ministers killed all projects above 50 tons, 
citing logistical and doctrinal realities. Against these rivals, the IS-7's edge was balance proven in steel. It didn't just promise mobility, it achieved it. It didn't just claim protection, live fire trials backed it up. Its S-70 gun delivered high velocity and a practical six to eight rounds per minute, enough to exploit opportunities its armor and speed created. The 705 was lighter, but less heavily armed. The 718 was more heavily armed, but unrealistic to field. The IS-7 alone demonstrated a workable, if extreme, path forward. Even as heavy tank doctrine faded, designers considered adapting the IS-7's chassis into other roles. The object, 261 family, experimented with 152 mm and even 180 mm long-range guns in both front and rear-mounted fighting compartments. The Object 263 envisioned a fast tank destroyer with a 130 mm S-70A in a semi-open casemate. These concepts reflected a late 1940s trend of repurposing heavy hulls, but tightening budgets and shifting priorities kept them from advancing beyond models. Was the IS-7 a Frankenstein? Absolutely, and that was its strength. It took geometry and mechanical lessons from the IS-6 series, architecture and gun growth from 257-258-259, and urgency from the closing years of the war. The result was the zenith of Soviet heavy tank design, a near 70-ton machine that moved like a medium, hit like coastal artillery, and wore armor sculpted to bully ballistics. The Cold War began without it, but the IS-7 remained the undisputed peak of its breed, proof of how far steel, horsepower, and ambition could be pushed before reality pushed back. All that history sets a high bar. So how close does the in-game IS-7 come to the real thing? On the surface, War Thunder's model nails almost everything. The in-game IS-7 matches the real tank's weight, silhouette, and M50 T-Class engine output, approximately 1,050 horsepower, giving it the same high-speed, high-weight feel recorded in trials. The five-man crew with two loaders, the assisted loading system with six ready rounds and about 30 in total, the correct ammunition types, and the distinctive armor layout, pike nose, rounded cheeks, thick mantlet, are all faithfully reproduced. Even the secondary machine gun suite, from caliber mix to placement, closely mirrors the prototype. But perfection is elusive. The in-game BR-482B shell carries 115 grams of A9X2, while historical documents list 125 grams. That 10-gram shortfall doesn't change penetration, but it does slightly reduce post-penetration effect. And since 2019, Gaijin has calculated penetration using a unified internal solver based on Demar and Lanz Odermatt formulas, rather than original Soviet firing tables. This means performance at certain angles and ranges may diverge from the historical record. That raised an obvious question. How far apart are the game's numbers from a realistic S-70 penetration profile, since the IS-7's original firing table can't be confirmed without the archival source, we turn to the closest ballistic match, the 130mm M46 field gun, which fires the same ammunition family. We adjusted its data from 930 meters per second to 900 meters per second to match the S-70, then applied interpolation and velocity scaling using the Demar formula to create a grounded reconstruction of real performance. At zero degree impact, the game overestimates penetration by plus 21.3% to plus 24.4% across all distances, enough to turn marginal shots into sure kills. At 30 degrees, the deviation is smaller but still in the game's favor, ranging from plus 12.5% to plus 14.0%. At 60 degrees, however, the difference narrows to plus 4.6%, to plus 6.6%, putting it close to the margin of measurement error, but still slightly optimistic. In practical terms, the in-game IS-7 can penetrate targets frontally at flat angles that would have been far less certain in reality. At steep angles, it's much closer to the historical curve, but the edge still leans toward the player, and that's where the real-world IS-7 and its War Thunder counterpart finally part ways. From its origins as a patchwork of wartime experiments to its final form as the Object 260, the IS-7 was the ultimate expression of Soviet heavy tank design. Fast for its weight, armed like coastal artillery, 
and protected by some of the most advanced armor shaping of its time. It outclassed its paper rivals, proved itself in trials, and even in War Thunder, it stands as one of the most faithfully recreated tanks in the game, with only small differences in shell load and penetration curves separating it from reality. But history had no battlefield for the IS-7. Politics, doctrine, and logistics kept it from service, leaving it as both the peak and the end point of the Soviet heavy tank era. If you enjoyed this deep dive and want to help keep projects like this going, consider joining the channel's Patreon. You'll get early access to upcoming videos, behind the scenes research, and exclusive content that doesn't make it into the final cut. And if you want to talk tanks, tactics, or just hang out with a community of armor enthusiasts, hop into our Discord server. Links in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.